As a mother and lover of her most beloved, Marilena Shama Shakti continues her journey discovering the endless possibilities of one's soul inside each silent moment of life. Whatever comes in life, it will pass, and a lot of things will come and pass. What we can say in general about yoga, the aim is to unite the body, to unite with the mind, to unite the emotions, to unite all the parts of the human being together. Marilena, what prompted you to concentrate on various inner arts? I remember me when I was seven or eight, going for sleep, and I was repeating to myself, if it was not this universe, what was going to be? And I was keeping repeating this question to myself till I was entering a state of meditation. Without knowing that it was a meditation, I was feeling that I was entering the universe. And I was staying in the bed <laughs> for very long, and I was enjoying this state. So maybe it's something that I carry since, I don't know, previous life, or it's something that I, I have it as, as a person. And then when I went for the, my studies, uh, when I was 18, I suffered from depression. And after I was feeling better, a friend of mine said, why you don't come for yoga? And I said, what is this? And she said, just come. So I went for the yoga. And I was so surprised, I was even crying in the first class because it was my practice <laughs> that I was doing at the age of 15 till the age, age of uh, 17. And then I realized that actually I was practicing yoga and I was telling my mom also, hey mom, come practice with me because this practice will help you with this. And then when I did the training, I realized that whatever I was telling my mom, it was exactly what are, were the benefits of yoga. It was a call in, in, uh, from a very young age. What are the benefits to esoteric practices? Yoga, it's very wide. It's, it's, it's very big umbrella. And un under this umbrella, we have a lot of branches. And under those branches, we have different schools and lineages. And uh, according to the branch and the lineage that you follow, then the practices are different. So it's not an answer, one answer that I can give to you that the benefits if you practice this is this because it's so big and it's so, it has such a depth that it's not only one thing. Yoga, it comes from uh, the word yuk that it means to unite. So in any branch that you follow, in any practice that you follow, the aim is to unite the body, to unite with the mind, to unite the emotions, to unite all the parts of the human being together. So you will reach the, the, a blissful state, a state of enlightenment. This is, this is actually the goal. So the benefits are different according to the technique, the branch, the lineage that you follow. How do you apply these benefits in a world of many disturbances? Yoga gives you this space, what we call in Sanskrit Shanti. It's a space, it's a, it's a pause. You make a pause, you step back, and then when you step back and you make this pause in between thoughts, in between emotions, in between all these actions that we do, actually we give space to our inner wisdom to rise up. And it's a good, good way to, to deal with ourselves when we have the support of our inner wisdom. So what the yoga helps you is that when your body feels okay, for example, if you practice asanas, like the body, the body practices, or the breathing exercises, or the cleansing of yoga, then actually when you do it all the time, you create this habit in your body. And then your nervous system starts, starts to switch into another mode. And when we are in a hectic life, a lifestyle and we are stressed and we are under this pressure, actually we use mostly the sympathetic nervous system and we are running, we are just running and running and the, the mind has to run, the emotions, the reactions, and we are in this stress. So when we practice yoga, actually what we do, we shift into the parasympathetic nervous system mostly. And the parasympathetic nervous system helps you to slow down, to rest and digest. This is how we call this parasympathetic nervous system. So when you have time and when you learn your body and your nervous system to shift fast in that, then you gain also the benefits. You can step back a little bit, take your time, breathe, work with what, what you have because it's already a habit. Your organs work differently so you can digest. You have to practice 
every day for years, but for sure for the body, it's a good beginning, 21 days or eight weeks. Uh, of practice, it's even more especially for the brain, eight weeks of practices, either meditation or yoga or whatever, because then uh, you start to have in your the, the neurons of, of your brain, they start to have this habit, let's say, and they realize that, okay, there is another way to make the neurons communicate and then you have a different perspective of things or you put yourself in a different perspective to look at the life or situations or problems or even the, the good things in life. You have a different perspective, not only one perspective to see and feel and embody life. In 2015 you founded Open Yoga Day Cyprus. What was the aim of this wonderful initiative and how has it evolved since its inception? It was that year that I was feeling grateful for what yoga gave me and that the support that I had from, from this big spiritual gift, let's say that it's for everyone. So I decided to practice Seva. Seva is a Sanskrit word that means uh, selfless offering. So I decided that I will offer it selfless to the people to know what is yoga, to the people of Cyprus. It's a, an initiative that it was uh, free of charge, of course. Everyone could come to the classes and just practice. The aim of it, it was to gather together people, to gather together the yoga teachers, to gather together everyone to realize what yoga can benefit in every level physical, psychological, mental, spiritual, and that it's something that is for everyone, regardless the age, the um, sect that somebody might follow, the um, gender or age or anything. In 2018, it was the biggest event. It happened in Nicosia. We managed to gather together around 280 yogis or practitioners to practice at the same time at the same place. It was huge and it was really, really good. In 2019, it was the last one just before COVID. It was in Limassol. It was good enough, but the, because we shift the dates, I think that a lot of people, they miss it. And now we are preparing the, the next one after COVID, <laughs> Open Yoga Day Cyprus. What led you to establishing the Silent Truth Institute? Well, Silent Truth Institute, it's, um, it's my third child, the fourth actually, because if we say that the first one was Akasha Center, my practices, and then Open Yoga Day Cyprus, then it's my daughter, of course. And then uh, Silent Truth, it was created in 2018. I was already feeling at that time that I gathered a lot of experience, uh, education and trainings by that time. So I was feeling that it's time to give it further to the people. So that's why I created uh, Silent Truth Institute in order to have teacher trainings for new teachers, for new people that they would like to get trained in yoga. Tell us about the various facilities offered at your center. In this studio, actually, we offer yoga classes, group or private yoga classes. To tell the truth, uh, now this year I'm in a shifting process. It's an inner process that is happening inside me. So actually, the classes are shifting. I used to offer uh, aerial yoga. I still offer aerial yoga and actually I was the first that I brought it in Cyprus. I bring aerial yoga in Cyprus in 2013. So after 10 years, I feel like um, it has to shift also into something different. And because my practice and my teachings, they start to be more therapeutic and more esoteric. And um, I can say that even more spiritual, I can say that because uh, the people feel that. And I try to give this, this support through the practice, through the physical port, uh, practice to people. So actually what we offer is more limited than before. It is a real yoga, but in a different way. It's more restorative, it's more therapeutic, it's more, it's closer to the traditional yoga. So we use the hammock as a prop instead of practicing this hybrid practice of real yoga that has a lot of physical practice. It has some pilates, it has some asanas and so on. So what else we offer is restorative yoga. It's the active part of restorative yoga and the more passive, if we can say passive, the one 
It has to do mostly with the fascia and with the flexibility of the body. And the other one, it's more esoteric. It has to do with the nervous system and with the state of mind and the state of, of bliss, if we can say in a general term, that we can enter. We offer Hatha Yoga, the traditional Hatha Yoga. So we work a lot with the energy, with the chakras, with the nadis, uh, with, um, with the with the koshas, with the layers we have in our body and with the bodies that we have. So we work a lot this way. Meditation classes. Uh, and now this year, after a lot of years that I stopped, I brought back the women's circles, the women gatherings. It was the very first that I have started in Cyprus back in 2005 when I came. Yes, my guru then, he said, start with the women's group, with Tandra for Shaktis, yes, for women. So we have gatherings once per month for the time being. Later on, we will have every, every week. We try to be aligned with uh, the energy that are happening in the cosmos right now. So for the, for the moment, because we, we shifted in a period of time for healing, we are working a lot with pelvis, with the inner organs of women, with the trauma that it's considered to be placed there, for especially for women and how we deal with that, with menopause, with, um, with the period, with the psychology of women, with spirituality and so on. Whatever comes in life, it will pass and a lot of things will come and pass. If we stay just open in what is going on, then everything will pass and we will evolve. Everything, it, it happens for our evolution.